Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another Mission Editor tutorial video. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off the last time. Last time we'd taken our single plane, single target mission and we'd added a couple more targets and we'd added another plane. Uh, and we'd also changed the time of year, but we hadn't gone out and taken a look at what the mission looked like. So why don't we jump right back in at that point. Okay, here's the mission. Let's just grab it and uh, go fly it. Now we'll be given the option now because we have two aircraft that we've set up. We're going to jump in the Su-25. Uh, it's set up for a cold start, so it won't do anything, which is kind of what we want. Because um, rather than flying the mission this time, I'm just going to go take a look at those new vehicles we put down using the F-10 key. Yes, and then we'll just move it. Well, and then let's, you know, let's kind of fly over there. So we'll use the control F-11 key. Get ourselves in the world. Uh, if I remember rightly, our targets are around there. And then we'll just start flying there using the uh, mouse wheel. So mouse wheel back to move forward, mouse wheel forward to move back. And we're just zooming in down to where our targets are. We can look around a little. You can notice that the, the time of year has changed and it's earlier in the morning now. So we get some really interesting light if we wanted to someday make this into a video, which is obviously what I think about when I'm making these things. So here we are coming down to where our targets are. Now I've hit Alt K, so I don't keep coming lower. Now I can sort of tilt down and look at the vehicles as we go by. And there we are. We have our little convoy as we had specified in the mission editor. So that's all good. Okay, so we can uh, stop and turn around and what's probably all we need to do right now. There's a nice uh, view of the city of Mozdok on this fine autumn morning. And uh, we'll quit and we'll go back to the mission editor. And now let's think about what are some other things that we might want to do. Well, we have multiple aircraft and we have multiple vehicles. Maybe it's time that we started adding some uh, movement. Let's put our world in motion a little bit here. So let's select our convoy and then a panel opens on the right here uh, that includes a little tab that is the waypoints tab so now we can start setting waypoints now because it's the mission editor you got to be a little bit careful about what you do first of all in order to add waypoints let's, let's just make them go into you but we need to click on the add button and now we are adding waypoints so if i click here uh, because we've used on road as a formation um, they'll just follow the road down to that waypoint so that's good now, I just want you to notice something. If you say I pick waypoint two here, which is not where I wanted it to be. If I want to change it, I have to be a little careful what I do. Because I'm sit, sitting on add rather than edit, if I try to select that waypoint to move it, all that's going to happen is I'm going to create another waypoint. That's not what I wanted. But now in order to delete that waypoint, I under no circumstances will hit the delete key. I will press the delete button and then I will press the edit button and now I can move waypoint two, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. So you have to be a little careful about that. Remember, don't use the delete key to delete things. Oops. And you see, I've made a mistake there because I was on edit when I clicked uh, on a white space. I didn't add a waypoint. I just deselected. So now I've gone back. I've clicked add. Now I have to make sure I go to the last waypoint. So I add a waypoint after the last waypoint. And now I have three waypoints. And my convoy is hopefully going to go around the big U. Okay, so um, now we can review the waypoints. And here's where another little uh, mission editor feature comes in. You'll notice that the waypoints are labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3 out of 4. So there are actually four waypoints. It's just that they're 0 indexed. So they start at 0. Welcome to the mission editor. Uh, like I said, if this wasn't designed by uh, programmers, I don't know a program that was. So one thing that we can do uh, when we review the waypoints is we can look at the speed and it will tell us at this speed exactly how long it will take to get to each waypoint, which is very helpful. So for instance, we can see it's going to take 17 minutes at 11 knots for us to get to waypoint one. Now, if we wanted that to be faster, we just go in here and change this to say 20 knots. And lo and behold, it takes um, around half the time. And if we want that to propagate to all the other waypoints, we have to increment the waypoint and then change the speed. Now, uh, if we had changed the speed at the beginning, when, oops, see, I made another mistake. Make sure I hit delete 
There we go. Make sure I'm on edit. All right, so if we wanted to use that speed for all of the waypoints, if we'd set it the first time we set a waypoint, then it would have propagated through. Okay, so now, very important that we have saved it. Uh, so in case we make a mistake, we'll always be able to go back. Okay, so let's quickly go into the mission and let's see if we have a convoy that's moving. All right, we'll select our SU-25 so it won't be doing anything while we're checking. Once again, we'll go to F10. This time we'll actually just scroll straight over to the convoy. We won't fly over there. Zoom in a little bit. Press Control F11. And fly down and see if we actually see our trucks moving along the road. Now, there are some other keys that you can use to move uh, the camera. If you use the numpad, asterisk, and backslash keys, you can move in and out. And you can also zoom in and out with the external zoom controls, uh, which are usually set to control backslash and control asterisk. Now, as you can see, we have trucks and they are moving along the road. And so it looks like we have actually managed to program our convoy to drive down the road. Excellent. Just practicing a little moving the camera around. So as you can see when I'm using those keys, I don't add to the speed of the camera like I do with the mouse wheel. All right, so let's go back into the mission editor. Okay, here we are back in DCS. What should we do next? Well, we've got the convoy moving. Let's also get the aircraft moving. So one thing that I end up doing a lot in the mission editor is actually running the mission where I have the AI um, also fly it just so I don't have to continue to get in the cockpit. The way my cockpit is set up, it's a little bit of a pain to switch from the mission editor to the cockpit. So I find it's useful just to actually run the mission and have the AI fly it so I can see how things go. So why don't we try doing that? So let's zoom back in on our aircraft here. And what I will do is I will change them there. If I get the aircraft, I'll change them both to be AI driven. So I'll give them both AI levels. So I'm going to make them both aces. Now I'm going to take the SU-25T and I'm going to click this button here, which is late activation, which essentially means that it won't show up when we come into the mission. I don't want to delete them, but I also don't need them for this part of the mission. So I'm just going to set them to late activation. We'll see how that plays in a little bit later. In a later episode, when we start talking about trigger points, you'll see the value of uh, late activation because essentially you can you can uh, set something to come on or show up uh, when other things happen. That's why it's there. So let's click on our SU-25. Uh, to make this easier, I'm going to go and have him actually take off from the runway. And when I do that, he automatically moves to the runway. So what I will do is um, I'm going to set the make sure I'm in add. I'm going to set the first waypoint just straight along the flight path here, and let's set that to 3,000 feet. Let him climb up there, and then I'm going to set a waypoint. I'm just going to have him fly a square across the convoy's route. What I really just want to find out is how far the convoy goes by the time he gets there. So I'll give him that, another one will make that 4,000 feet, and then when I place the remainder, they'll stay at that 4,000 foot level. So I'll come down here, and then I'll click here at the beginning of the landing approach, and then I'll give him a last waypoint, and I'll give him that waypoint, I will call that landing. And just for good measure, I'm gonna back up to waypoint number four. And I'm going to decrease this to 3,000 feet. If I make it too high, uh, he won't actually go into the landing mode. He'll end up flying in circles. Just trust me on that. Okay, so now I make sure I'm in edit in case I want to move any of those waypoints around. Maybe we'll move this guy so he's a little bit more parallel or, you know, uh, right angles to the convoy. All of that looks pretty good. Let's check. So he's on ace and he's going to take off from the runway. The other guy's on late activation. All right, let's, uh, let's save it. 
And then let's jump into the mission and see what happens. So an important thing to remember when we jump in here is that we're not able to actually uh, sit in the cockpit because we have set um, this to AI. So we end up in what I, I is called the F2 view, the external view. I'm looking around the aircraft by moving my mouse and I'm zooming in and out by rolling my mouse wheel. So let's just take a look at the takeoff. So the thing about the F2 view is that it will retain the same orientation regardless of what the plane does. So even as the plane rotates, you see the camera does not change uh, position or orientation. Now, if we were, there are some other external views we'll talk about uh, later on when we talk about making videos, um, the F4 view in particular that attaches the camera to the plane so that when the plane changes its orientation, the camera changes as well. But as you can see in the F2 view, um, our plane's now trying to climb up to the altitude that we gave him, the 3,000 feet, and we're just keeping exactly the same orientation. So this is very good if you want to, um, if you don't want to see the camera moving around when the airplane moves around, it gives you sort of a more of a feeling of a stable chase camera. And we can just rotate around slowly by slowly moving the mouse. And we can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. If you have uh, a mouse that has variable resolution, like a gaming mouse, then you can always uh, fiddle with that to change the rate at which you can move the mouse around. And there's some keyboard shortcuts that change that as well, but I'm, I'm not really going to go into that here. The one keyboard shortcuts that I do want to go into are how to speed up the mission. So if you hit Control z see every time I hit Control z you'll notice down here, that, oops, I can't move my mouse down there. If you look down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that there's a red number that changes and that's the multiplication factor, the speed of the aircraft. So we're gonna set them to four. Now, if I wanna shift back to normal time, I just hit Shift Z and we go back to normal time. I can slow it down also. Now, normally the hotkey for slowing down is Alt Z. That's a problem for anybody who has an NVIDIA video card because that's also the, the uh, hotkey to control the N NVIDIA overlay. So I have it set to Z, so you can see I can set it to half speed as well. Or I can go back to regular speed, or we can speed it up to say three times. And so that's good, so we can, because we're not really too worried about uh, exactly uh, the details of what's happening. We just kind of want to fly the pattern and see where the plane ends up at the same time that the trucks do. Now one thing we can do, is set it back to normal speed, I can also use my F10 key still and I can actually go out and I can actually watch this from in map mode if I want to, which is really useful. So let's just go back in, I'm going to press the F2 key to go back to watching the aircraft. We'll speed them up just a little. And now you can see the, the trucks right there. I'm going to slow it down to normal speed. You can see the trucks right there on the road. So I've got a pretty good spot here. The aircraft is flying over the trucks at around, the, around this point. So if we wanted to attack the trucks uh, on their route, this would be a pretty good route to set the airplane to. So we'll just let them go by. There's our happy little convoy. that would work well so we can look around see where the airplane is and just using the F2 key now, there's one other view that you might be interested in but it's easy to use and that's if we press the F3 key we just get a flyby pass and sometimes that's really useful just to see what the world looks like with the airplane flying through back to F2 I'm going to speed up time a little again and we'll go out and see how our AI pilot does it actually landing the aircraft. So there's the airfield and you can see because I'm using the F2 key I can basically keep the uh, camera more or less pointed at the air 
field as uh, it moves with the airplane, but it doesn't change orientation. So now if I want to make sure I'm going to be aimed at the airfield while he's landing, I'll just turn to something like this. And we'll just watch and see how he does. Oh, he's coming off the end of the airfield now. Hopefully he's going to turn here. Hopefully he's going to turn here. There we go. Maybe not the best turn for getting lined up, even for an ace pilot. And zoom in a little bit here. Keep the airfield in view. Keep the airplane in view. Okay, he's slowing down. Don't forget we're at four times speed here, so this is all happening pretty quickly. Is he actually going to lower the landing gear? I don't know that he is. I suspect he's going to go around here. Yeah. Oh, no. He's lowering his landing gear. Yep, but he is going to go around again. Okay, so he didn't like the approach we gave him, so he's going to do his own approach. And welcome to the AI, folks. This is another topic that we will end up speaking about at some length uh, when we're talking about the mission editor. When you start trying to program uh, particularly AI aircraft to fly with you and get them to do what you want, um, there can be um, some interesting moments. Now, hopefully this time he's going to get himself lined up on the runway. He's looking good. Closing his air brakes. We take a side view here. Zoom out a little so we can get a nice picture of his landing. Let's put him back in normal speed. Looking like a pretty nice approach. And once again, we can appreciate the fine fall weather here around Mozdoc as we wait for this uh, landing to occur. Alright, here we go. And then for the flare. And he's down. And somewhere along here, if we press the F3 key, we'll watch him go by and deploy his parachutes. And mission accomplished. So let's go back to the mission editor. So that, you know, we didn't really need to finish that mission and watch the landing really. Uh, just watching the AI, AI land. But the reason I wanted to do that was to show you that this really is the power that you have when you use the mission editor. We set up uh, an entire mission and we went out and the AI flew it. And everything that happened on that mission was essentially something that we programmed. So we, we took the DCS world, we basically used the mission editor to program it. Um, to do what we wanted it to do, which I think is really kind of a cool thing. And that's why I like using the mission editor. Essentially, DCS gives me the world. And the mission editor gives me the power to essentially, uh, it's effectively like writing a little program to tell the world what I want it to do. And there's an awful lot more things that we can do. As I said, we start getting pretty sophisticated when we start talking about triggers and events and, and those kinds of things where we can... Um, you know, effectively build a bunch of if-then-else statements to tell the world how we want it to react. And it's basically like writing code, at least in my mind. Um, and that's why I really like using the mission editor, and I hope we're going to have a chance to do a lot more of that as we follow this series along. Okay, for today, that's around a 20-minute video, so we're probably going to stop it there. Uh, to review, we took our uh, mission, we added some motion to both our target and our aircraft, uh, we put the aircraft in AI, and we actually watched um, the AI fly the mission. So uh, next time, maybe what we'll do is we'll actually uh, hop back in the aircraft, fly the mission and see what it looks like when we actually fly it. And then we'll talk about some other things that we can do. Maybe it's time to start talking about uh, a little bit more uh, conditional stuff that we can do. But anyways, um, that's it for now. If you're enjoying the series, please subscribe to the videos. And hey, if you have some friends who uh, you think would benefit from it, get them to subscribe too. Um, for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.